You are listening to AM Thunder, the official pay-per-view review show of Kayfabe Talk Radio. And now your hosts, Eric the Red and Mr. Bones. Alright everyone, welcome to this edition of k Talk Radio's AM Thunder, which is a pay-per-view review show of the G1 special from New Japan. I'm Eric the Red, joined along with, as always, Mr. Boonsaw. And we're just going to jump right into it. So the first match we had here was the team of Chaos of... Do-do-do... Uh, actually, I got the uh, other one up. Let's see, San Francisco. Uh, okay, from Chaos, it was Yoshihashi, Gil, Rocky Romero, and Sho and Yo, were representing Rupongi 3K, against the Bullet Club of Yujiro Takahashi, Chase Owens, Tonga Loa, Tama Tonga of Grills of Destiny, and their father, the fucking legend, King Haku. Your thoughts, Bonesaw? It's actually a really solid opening match. Um, uh, the one, the one kind of like eye rolling situation in the entire match was Yoshihashi knocking down King Haku. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit what or who wants to push uh, Yoshihashi in any fashion. Uh, no way, in any reality, Yoshihashi is gonna knock down. Motherfucking Haku. Yeah, I I mean I I thought for myself though, like I, I get it, like not for none, Haku is in his fifties and he wasn't the fastest moving guy in the ring and that's you know, it's understandable, but that doesn't fucking mean sell to one of the most unbelievable non believable I should say, in, instead, non the most one of the most non believable characters, wrestlers that you have on that roster. Um Yuji uh she basically is a fucking Eugene in that uh, fucking promotion. Um, Yoshihashi is basically just um, bland. There's nothing to him. He has no character. You know, they give him this gimmick, the, the, the headhunter. But yeah, to, for him for him to be there and Haku to sell him, I was like, okay, what the fuck? Yeah, it's a little eye rolling there. Uh, I think Yoshihashi really has no real character. Um, I think. In this match, the um, one of the highlights and like one of the guys that were were really um, pushing, like making the the match really electric, was um, Rocky Romero. Yeah, yeah. Rocky Romero was always a pro with that, though. Yeah, you know, I feel like. Yeah, Rocky. Rocky was really good in uh, his his hot tag and. Uh, Getting really into the face of um, uh, Tama Tonga and and, and and especially that that whole exchange he had with uh, Loa, with the um, just going you know Irish whipping and, and hitting him head on and hitting him head on over and over and over again until he finally used the speed to overpower uh, uh, Loa and f- finally scored a knockdown on him and uh, I thought that was a really good. Um, you know, like it just a, a good hope spot, and uh, you know, he, Yo and Show were really, really good. I thought they they ha- were very explosive in the match. Um, even Gato, even Gato had a good showing in the, in the match. Um, you know, and we usually think of him more as a manager, but uh, you know, he he was a pretty good wrestler in his time, and you know, it, it, he he had a pretty good pretty good showing i thought it was a little ridiculous for him almost getting the the fall i kind of like it, it kind of has like a, a a shane mcmahon vibe where it's like yeah we understand he was a wrestler in his time but i don't think he should be getting a near fall over uh tama Tonga. um I, I what were your thoughts on the match it was a it was a solid opener it wasn't really you know, it, it was what you would expect for just to get, I guess, just get the vibe started. I mean, it wasn't something, you know, it, it, to me, it would have been fine if they called this, like, I, mean, I hate to say it because, you know, if 
King Haku was not in the match, this basically would have been a solid pre-show match. Um, but, oh, you know, uh, but, yeah, you know, like you said, like, um, Rocky Romero did his, his spots, Yo and Sho keep getting more impressive, I feel like Sho is the better worker of the two, um, he could eventually branch out to be a singles, um, junior heavyweight star, um, on the Bullet Club side, uh, you know, Chase Owens continues to keep getting better, I, I'm still not 100% sold on Tokyo Pimp, Tomatonga is clearly, like, um, a main eventer at this point. I I think um, I think uh, you can't you can't really um, also uh, re a lot of uh, credit to uh, Tonga Loa because he was yeah he was fantastic. I loved his selling. Well, his lack of selling and his just just I love I love when he gets like the kind of like the like Hulk Hogan pumped up or you can't like knock him down. Or you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I love how he sells that. I mean, he he just has that like insane look to him. Yeah. Um, uh, I I love I love the finish. I thought the finish was the, probably the best part of the match where you have King Haku make the save, get him into you know like the his 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 tongue and death grip, and uh, set up for the. Um, for the, for the gun stun cutter from Tamatanga, and that that was a really good and satisfying way to end the match. Um, and, and then also at the not you know not not spoiling anything till later, but uh, this is the, not the last time you'll see the Tongans kicking ass tonight. All right, right. Um, you know. Also, too, a uh, light, you know, a light thing, but an in, in attention to detail, nonetheless. Um, it was cool to see them back in the face paint. Yeah, they they, they haven't been in the face paint in a while. I th did think that would have been fucking it's creepy and awesome as fuck if they had Haku wear a little bit of face paint. Yeah, yeah, or or at the very least, just like something to like. Like a, maybe like kind of like a, a, a like a partial facial mask or something. something yeah. Something that we wouldn't normally see for him, but I mean, he looked good. Um, I, I thought he I thought he looked you know he looked quick and sharp out there. I don't, I don't think he looked like he was in pain or. Yeah, I, I do think he was moving a little. I mean, for you know, for his age, he's moving what you would expect. I mean, you know, but again, he wasn't like a lot with a lot of his strikes. He wasn't moving. Oh no, but he didn't look Fair. rusty. He yeah. didn't look rusty. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. He didn't look rusty, but also, you know, I he... don't expect him to do moons, the sitting moon salts. Right, know? right. <laughs> Next up, we had um, we had Ishii and Toru Yano, uh, against the team of Suzuki Goon of um, Stretch Armstrong, aka Zack Saber Jr. and Patrick's God Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> Neil before Suzuki. Um, you know, and the fact that we had. Haku out there minutes before Suzuki is unbelievable. Eventually, we hope to get their that dream team. Oh yeah, we, we'll, we'll get we'll get a team of Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So this tag match, what do you what do you think, Pat? Uh, I think it was I think it was a solid match. I think it was uh equivalent to their match at Dominion. Um, yeah, it, it's another match where neither neither team looks bad. Even regardless of the, the the victory or the loss, um, Ishii looked fantastic. Suzuki looked fantastic. Yano, Yano and Zack Saber Juniors uh, is a m matchup that I never thought I would completely love, but it works. Yeah, yeah, they have good chemistry, um, even with their contrast of styles. And uh, Ishii and uh, Suzuki eventually will get them on a one on one match. Uh, just them beating the ever loving piss out of each other's. Fucking, you can't help but to just love to watch that. I, I think they've done a good job at like setting it up and not giving you the full package, where we're you're getting the feud, like you're getting to set up for the feud and you're you're waiting for the payoff, but they haven't fully delivered on it. So I feel like that's you're you're getting you're getting a, a brief taste of it and you're not getting the full, the you know you're not you're getting you're getting a taste of the, you know, the entree, but you're not getting the full course. Right. And I think that's the, you know, I think that that's a good way of setting up, um, you know, their 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 feud going down the line. Um, you're probably gonna you probably see them 
feud up until maybe I'd say I think the blow off would probably be Wrestle Kingdom. All um, right. I think it's I think it'd be a good match, or if if they can include uh, maybe uh, include uh, Suzuki and and Ishii into the um, you know the, the feud. You will include their feud in the Never Open Weight Championship and have a three way. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, um, they probably would. I mean, I don't know though because I mean, if as long as Dodo's champ, because Dodo and Ishii are both in chaos, and unless it's the G One, they're really not too crazy in Japan about having uh, guys in the same stable competing against each other. Um, though I do think, yeah, it's definitely a, eventually at some point it's gonna be a fucking never open weight bout. Um, you know. But yeah, so yeah, Zack Sabre Jr. and Toriano, um, they, uh, again, great chemistry. I love the spot where Yano goes for the, uh, the low blow, Zack counters it, you know, basically fucking twists himself around because he's Stretch Armstrong. I, I love the, um, whole bit, and they, they, they did this in the prior match, but I love the, the bit where, um, they're taking turns, working different parts of the body, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're getting, getting... Yano into like different submission holds and and work you know countering and switching from one piece part of the body to the other and uh, I thought I, I it makes you really you know recognize how how well a submission team that uh, Suzuki and, and Saber are you know working together and um, I thought I thought Yano compliments uh, Saber a lot you know. I wouldn't mind watching a, 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 a full singles match with those two. Um, and Ishii versus Suzuki for the, the bits that they had. Um, very hardcore physical, you know. Uh, I think I think, I think think uh, the, the finish was, uh, here was also pretty good, where uh, you, you have Yano being basically just physically destroyed by... Uh, Saber, uh, Zach Saber Jr. and uh, him basically holding on to just you know a a any type of um, you know just any anything he can do to stop himself from just tapping out, and then Ishii has that crazy um, you know lariat that just basically looks like he he sent. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. into the fucking past with that force. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you know, and then another thing, too, I eventually I'm sure we'll see more matches against uh, even Ishii and Zack Sabre alone, too. Um, Y'all, I don't know. When I saw Yano back in the day, um, and I sound like an old man when I say this, but when I saw him, you know, almost a decade ago already, um, he, he's not what he was now. Right now, he's a lot more focused on being the comedy act, and that's fine. So, you know, seeing him in singles matches is whatever, but, um, you know, I, I know the money is in Ishii and Suzuki, but I'd even like to see Ishii and Zack Sabre Jr. at some point. Not, you know, if it's not here, maybe even in Rev Pro, in Defiant Wrestling, you know, something along that, because I know Ishii gets other bookings outside of this company, so... I mean, well, there's also the the thing is if they're gonna do a singles match between um, Suzuki and Ishii, I, I would. I, I mean, they could also do a match where they could take. Um, hypothetically, they could they could take uh, any any number of guys that are in Suzuki Goon right now and maybe put two guys from Chaos. You know, like you could have Yano and Yano and, uh, and maybe Kushida or. or uh, it would be a fun match. Kushida and Yano versus uh, maybe, well, definitely Zack Sabre Jr. and maybe um, Tai Chi. Actually, Kushida. Well, actually, Kushida's actually not in. Uh... Oh, he's out, He's outside of. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's, he's outside. Uh, Taguchi, I forgot. I forgot that he, he him, and, him and Tanahashi defected. Yep. Uh, well. uh, maybe, I don't know. Who, what, who's a. Who's a a junior weight that's in... I mean, Will Osprey? Oh, yeah, that could work. That'd be a fun match to watch. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we got... Um, Hangman Page and Marty Skrull defending the belts again. Well, ah, oh, fuck. Uh, going against um, Tanahashi and Kushida. 
Um, I and I accidentally said defending the belts because I was looking at uh, you know, the Young Bucks uh, L.A.J. match, but yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah. So yeah, the, the, the other Bullet Club members, Hangman and Marty against Bushida and Tanahashi. Um, it was an okay match. It was decent. I know I wasn't. It was not one of my favorites on this card. It was you know this was more of a uh, felt this this kind of felt more of like an opening match to me. I thought I thought it was fun though. Uh, yeah, it was fine. Good spots. I mean, to to be honest, here, like the I mean, you can't really go wrong. It's it, it was, I wouldn't say it's an average match. I thought there was a lot of good uh, good work that was done in the, in the match. Um, I I thought. I thought uh, Hangman and Marty have a lot of uh, have a lot of chemistry. Oh yeah! And I think they they would be a pretty good tag team if they ever decided to just do New, New Japan. I could I could definitely see them doing maybe a run, not now, but maybe maybe a year or two. I'd, I'd say maybe ROH tag champions too. Yeah, I could see it too. Um, know, since, since their mainstay is over there, who's you know what? The one thing I, I I'll notice for the for the um, for for this for this pay per view, um, they didn't they didn't defend the um, the 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 six man uh, titles. Yeah, well, I was confused about that. That's because that's because the Bucks were defending the tank titles. Uh, both. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 But um, I don't know. Again, this match. It's not, I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying that it was a match that you know was a, it was a solid match. You know there, it was a, you know it was just basically it was you know it was a it was a formal leg. Um, best way to put it, um, you know Hangman got all his spots in. I'd say the, the thing that stood out the most was when Marty and uh, Hangman were doing the the collaborated spot where they go over the rope and um, Marty does his super kick. While Hangman th then does the shooting star, um, which is always going to get a pop out of the people in the front couple rows, you know. But you know, again, but other than that, you know, every you know every guy in here complimenting each other. Hangman is you know definitely fucking holding his own in a guy, in against a guy like Tanahashi. Um, I, I like that they they set this match up to be because. Tanahashi and Hangman are, are supposed to be are in the same block, so they're basically going to be facing yeah. each other oh, yeah, almost yeah. immediately. So yeah. I thought this was a good way of setting that rivalry up going into um, the G1. And uh, you know, I, I thought that was a good way of setting it up. I, and also, uh, Marty, Marty and Kushida, that, that's, a, that's a pretty good feud that yeah. they've been known for a while. And oh, yeah. Especially even in Ring of Honor during the, you know, the, the whole uh, TV title. Uh, feud that they had, so uh, you know I thought it was a good match. Uh, I, again, not nothing, nothing incredibly special, but you know it was a fun match. Yep. Next up, we had um, Hiroki Goto defend the belt against a guy I'm really big fan of from the uh, indie scene as well as you know a little f you know a little TV show called Lucha Underground, um, who's known on there as Matanza, uh, Jeff Cobb. Um, what did you think of this? I thought it was a really hard hitting match. Um, I, I, yeah, again, we, we know this guy as Matanza. Uh, very tough guy. I thought it was perfect, uh, perfect, you know, foil for Goto. I thought the match what is w was a, in a way a, a very typical Goto match. Very hard hitting. Very brutal. Yeah. Um, uh, to be honest, I didn't I didn't find too much. You know, other than like a lot of the brutal spots, I thought this in a lot of ways was very similar to the bits that you know Suzuki and and Ishii had. So it's like a, it was a Haas match. You know that that that's a given with the, the never open weight title. Um, I I know, I feel like there wasn't as much psychology as which at which yeah you know I you know it is it is what it is, but I, I felt like it wasn't. Wasn't as brutal a match as uh, let's say the Goto Elgin match from from uh, uh, from Dominion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Taishi was also in that one too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I again, I was rooting for uh, Cobb, even though I, you know, th this match um, didn't have. They weren't setting the crowd on fire. They were, you know, the chemistry was decent enough. 
Um, but, you know, Jeff Cobb still in, continues to impress for a dude that fucking big doing moonsaults and shooting star presses and all that shit. Um, you know, which it's a thing where, you know, I, I'd rag on a guy like Keith Lee because Keith Lee tries to do shit like that, but, you know, he, he his pacing sucks. Whereas this guy has a lot more fucking momentum. He has a lot more, you know, um, endurance and stamina to do moves like that and still maintain a, a, a decent pace of the match and go on a lot, a lot longer. Um, you know, I was kind of, obviously I was rooting for him, but, you know, I had a feeling, like, um, just because of the way the match went, you know, in terms of uh, them not really having, uh, you know, I, I guess you could say something formal, you know, it was more formal than it was um, shocking that, hey, look, these guys are having a kick-ass match, much like what a lot of these main events were the rest of the show and a lot of these New Japan cards. Um, you know, I, hopefully this guy eventually gets more of a, more dates in, in this company and whatnot, but, you know, uh, I guess it, right now for okay, it's okay that uh, Goto keeps the belt. Yeah, I thought I thought overall uh, it was a fine match. Uh, really, uh, not uh, there was really no bad match in this in this paper either. So I'd say of the matches, I'd say, yeah, I'd say it was probably the besides the the opener. I'd say this this was probably either the match in terms of of quality was right right above that in, in overall in in, in the terms of of uh, quality of match, but. Yeah. Um, it, again, it, it wasn't. A, it was none of these matches were bad, but I, overall, if I was going to read the matches, I'd say this was like the second worst, and that's not that's not a knock at them. It just it's it it was a, it was a fine match. I th- just thought it was it, it could have been it could have been better. Understood. Um, next up, we had on this card the the big rematch for the tag team scene. We had the Young Bucks of Matt and Nick defending the belts. Again and retaining against Evil and Sonata. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually kind of confused because they. I thought they were gonna probably end up dropping the belts to them, and kind of play a hot potato because, um, it, it's it's weird because they they have have both the the three man titles and they have that title. So I, I'm guessing at some point they're gonna drop one of those one of those titles. Um, it, it it was a interesting match. I thought uh, they they did a lot of stuff. They they tried to um, incorporate a lot of the things that they did in the Dominion match. I didn't think they succeeded in in creating something that was better. Um, they might not have been trying to so much, but I thought overall. Um, it was a it was a okay match. I, I thought you know there was a lot of clean spots. The the psychology wasn't there. That that was the one thing I, I would say. They they were we kind of went back to their previous um, you know the the previous wheelhouse of we're going to use a lot of offense and yeah I mean not to say that they weren't selling at all but um, I I just thought the psychology was much better in Dominion. I yeah. thought the spots, you know, the spots were cleaner in this one, and uh, I, I just annoying annoying thing that New Japan ends up doing is, uh, and I saw in this match a lot uh, the ref bump. Uh, it's a weird situation in in New Japan where a ref a ref bump is supposed to turn the title tide of a match, and it ends up being kind of a. I, I, it, it just becomes like a weird false finish, and I, I, I don't understand why they do it as much as they do. And it's something I see a lot in New Japan. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it, it could be... Uh, for them, it could be just the way that they try to get the fucking, you know, um, develop some type of fucking, uh, like, I guess, rise out of the crowd, or um, you know, because obviously the crowds there are a lot different, and so they they construct their matches a little different a lot of times, but you know, but yeah, no, I I I have agree with you that you know the psychology here. I honestly, it's like obviously, yeah, the Dominion match was better, but I didn't see anything in here where I thought like, oh yeah, like you know this match was still a bad match. No, they 
did okay. It's not, it was, you know, it, it, basically, the best way I could put, you know, the, this match with these guys is they have, they have great chemistry, but this was one of those things where it was kind of like, okay, uh, the Bucks, you could tell because of how they're banged up, you could tell, you know, it got to the point where they were like, okay, let's just try to get through this match so we can have all for fucking, for a week. Yeah, it it just seemed like they were in kind of in. Um, I, I mean, this was a lot of the matches had a, a feeling like that, like it was in cruise control, and this is one of the matches. Like, and not to say it was a bad match. I, I I enjoyed it. I just think they were a little a little bit formulaic in certain parts. Uh, yeah. Once they get them, you know. WWE, you know, four moves of doom, but uh, yeah, it, it it was it was formulaic in certain parts, and I thought that they, they were over reliant on the ref bump on a lot of the matches in, in the in the card. Um, eh, all right, you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say too much. They they went over with the you know uh, the the Meltzer driver, so. Yep. Yep. Which you know, uh, I love the fact also too. To uh, you know, not not to go too much on the tangent here, but I, I love how you know. I guess you could tie, kind of tie it into um, the being the recent being the elite episode. If you guys haven't seen it, I don't mean to spoil this for you, uh, but I will say that uh, there's a certain segment in there where uh, they kind of allude, like Kenny and the Bucks make a joke about um, you know the Bucks. You know, and, and when it comes to the Bucks and Ring Psychology, that's all I'll say. So, you know, but, you know, I mean, it's not to say here that they don't apply Ring Psychology, and it's not to say that they haven't in the, the re most, like, couple matches in the couple, you know, recent couple months or an even year or so. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's just one of these things where it was very, um, you know, formulaic and... A decent match that you would put on if, if, if these guys were in WWE if you you would put on like I don't know Smackdown or something it wasn't a pay-per-view match if you were if you're gonna call this a pay-per-view true I just felt like more of a I mean I, I guess G1 can be the G1 special could be considered maybe a house show but yeah uh, I, I thought I thought it wasn't quite I, I wouldn't say it was a Smackdown match I would just say maybe a house show maybe a B-list pay-per-view i thought it, i thought it was a fine match i just didn't think it was on the same par as uh as the minion yeah, yeah for and sure. now going to a match where they really kind of phoned in okada osprey versus naito and bushi dude is it is it sad to say that you had a match with probably my favorite guy on the card and i honestly didn't even care about the match yeah the, the whole thing was kind of just phoned in um yeah yeah, yeah, I gotta be fair here. Yeah, that, like, it, it just didn't feel. It, I didn't feel much of anything from this match. I, they could have. They could have. Maybe. I. Uh, I don't know. I. I. You know. Sonata and Evil are have a lot of um, chemistry. Naito and Bushi. Uh, and I feel hit like, or miss. Yeah, Bushi. At this point, I feel needs to be maybe replaced or. They need to mm. do something with him. I'd say do someone. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't exile him out of the group just yet. I just. I don't think there's much for him to do other than he just eats pins, and that's that's. You know, it's not like he's a bad worker. It's just. Uh, I don't know. At this point, the they're really positioning much him, him as the weak link of the group. Yeah, I, because I, of how strong the other guys are. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I, I know he's he's there so the other guys don't eat pins, but at this point they've kind of just treated him like kind of a joke at this point. Like he's he literally is eating every single pin, and I don't think that's doing great things for him. Uh, he's getting he's kind of he's not getting quite to be like a uh, Captain New Japan Bone Soldier in terms of just being a joke, but. Uh, uh, he's not. He's not really. Um, he, he's not. He's not doing himself any favors by being eating every single pen for the rest of the guys. N Nido kind of just seemed bored. 
you know, after after doing his 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 uh, run with with Jericho and having that uh, an intense feud and Okada and and his his you know title run, uh, Osprey. It's it's a weird it's a weird situation because you have you have three of the top guys in in New Japan right now, and then you have Bushi, which is. He's not really too much of a slouch, but this this should have been a way better match, and I just kind of was bored with it. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I to tell you the truth, I you know, and I'm gonna say this not to be a dick, but I say this also because it's it didn't really stand out. Um, this match was this part was on Saturday. It's already you know as we're filming this, it's already Thursday. I forgot this match almost completely early. Um, and I feel bad. Again, I feel bad because of Naito and because of, um, you know, really because of all these guys, you know. I, I'm, I, I know my uh, my older counterpart, a.k.a. my father, kind of is not, you know, is kind of bored of Ogata and has been for months. But, you know, again, I still enjoy his matches. So. Uh, you know what the weird, the weird situation was? You had... You had Okada, Osprey, and 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 Naito. They're they fantastic, fantastic workers, fantastic um, pitchmen, and a fantastic promo. But you don't really see too much of their personalities shine through in this match. Um, usually, Naito and Okada have you know a decent you know wrap and forth in in their you know him taunting. Okada and Okada usually, you know, getting back into Naito's face. You didn't really see too much of that, you know, like it, other than you know a little bit of, you know, you know. But it, it just seemed, it just seemed kind of, especially considering how much history these two guys have, it didn't seem all that important in the the, the scheme of things. And uh, yeah, Osprey Osprey wasn't doing his his uh, whole shtick here, so I, I think this was kind of just more of a you know, it was a cool down match more than anything. Yeah, basically. I mean, you kind of needed one for the uh, the next fucking three matches. Yeah, which were all fantastic. Uh, next up, we had Hiromu Takahashi um, survive his match against Dragon Lee for the uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight well, Championship. What is what is their their plans now? Now that he's injured, I there right now there is none. Are they gonna Are they gonna have the belt be you know rendered vacant, or are they gonna maybe do an emergency tournament to figure out who's gonna be? Yeah, the they might. Champion? Yeah, they might. They might do something. Um, it also depends on how long he's gonna be out for as well. Yeah, I well, if it's as serious as you know, broken neck, I think it might be. <laughs> might he might be out for anywhere from a few months to a year. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean. So, well, we already kind of went over the, the whole broken neck situation. Yeah, we, yeah, we basically went over this on the uh, main show. So if you have, they, have, that, they, yeah. have they already explained what, how bad the injury is? Or? No, there's still not a lot of details out there yet. Okay. Um, yeah, as of this recording, and, you know, uh, we, have, we don't have any information in front of us. Um, you know, so, but, you know. I, I mean, it was a fine match. I just think it was a, it was a weird a weird decision oh, to do top. that. Uh, it was a great match. I thought. I, uh, w- weirdly enough, I think they've had better matches. I, I yeah. just, I, I think know. they've had I think they've had better matches it, in, in the previously. I, I mean, just, without them looking like they're gonna kill each other, yeah. And I'm not even talking about that spot. I'm even talking about like a lot of the other spots they did. Look, even that fucking that out of nowhere Canadian destroyer that Haru did. That didn't look too fucking safe. Oh yeah, they, it. This they, the way that they were working was very stiff. Very stiff, very uh, brutal style. Um, uh, I, I, I personally preferred their previous matches. I thought I thought this as stiff as this match was. I thought. Um, yeah, I, I just. I think they they had to rush like towards the end they had to rush the match because of the injury, yeah. and uh, I you know I lost a little bit of the psychology going into the match. 
Um, I don't think they, they should have just did that uh, that, uh, that draping released fucking uh, a suplex there and he just ended up dropping right on his fucking neck. Um, yep. What, what, were, what were some of the spots that you that you that you noticed throughout the match? Oh man, I mean, I know the one. There were, okay, like there were some spots that they did that the crowd got a real rise for that you, you saw when they were doing the replay. It was like, oh, okay, that's not too bad. Like, like one I remember. Well, obviously the, the, the fucking power bomb on the floor that Herman always does, the crowd kind of, like, oohed and on for that. I remember the one spot where, um, Hiromu was hanging on the ring posts, and, uh, Dragon Lee does the, uh, kind of like, I guess, the coup de gras, uh, like, double stomp kick. Um, it, it looks like he's doing, doing it to the head, but he really is just doing it to the, uh, you know, the, the chest. And, you know, he got enough momentum on it, and enough height, that it looked brutal enough. Um, I don't know, it was just like, for the most part, the match started out good, and then after a while, they just started looking like, you know, they were getting fucking, just snuck. <laughs> that, that would, uh, that would, uh, be the, be the case here. Um, they were a very stiff match, uh, and especially considering it's a junior, junior heavyweight championship. Yep. And, uh, you know, it, it that... Usually you you see in the more more of the house matches and the you know like especially in the never open weight championship, uh, you you would usually see this that type of style of wrestling where it's like very destructive, very uh, very violent, uh, and this one this one just seemed very um, stiff and, and and aggressive. And uh, you know, again, where we hope uh, Hiromu is okay, mm-hmm. or is it okay as you can get with a broken neck? And uh, hopefully, we'll see him, Mr. Belton, and uh, Daryl. Yeah. Again. Someday. Actually, I don't know if he called this by Jr., but who he had with him was Daryl Jr. Because Daryl, the actual Daryl, Daryl found. Another cat named Carol, and they had a kid, and it's Daryl Jr. who's wearing the mask. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So, so, actually, according to Josh Burnett and, and Jim Ross, Daryl's actually a grandfather. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually, I love the fact that he's created an entire storyline. Story, yeah. Just, just with a stuffed animal. Yeah, man, it's kind of like Al Snow, but he took that to a whole... Horomu took it to a whole other fucking level. Well, that's why, I, that's why I jokingly said he should have his own Japanese... Television show. Television show. And yeah. I've actually tweeted that at him, and I've gotten likes. <laughs> from from, people, who knows if, from if, people in Japan, too. Who knows? If it's enough... If there's enough publicity, they'll they'll get behind it. Next match, um, I... And it's, this is not to slight the main event... This is just my own personal opinion. Um, this match here, Juice Robinson and Jay White, I would honestly say, um, was probably my favorite match. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, well, I mean, not only just because of the the, the ending, but uh, yeah, I'm not even talking about the emotion. ending. The emotion yeah. in the uh, uh, Jay White is a fantastic heel. Uh, I think he kind of personified the chicken shit heel. Also, a lot of like the arrogance, they you know they you know, wanting to do physical harm to pretty much everyone that got in his way. Um, I also thought the the uh, bit with with Josh Burnett and, and Jr. kind of elevated the match. And then, Absolutely, especially how how angry and how uh, you know how much. You know emotion and fire that that caused in the match afterwards. So um, I'm I'm hoping like I like Jay White. I hope this is in a situation where he's going to be punished because it, 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 looking back at it, it wasn't really his fault. You know, it, he he hit the barricade and the barricade came loose, and that was that was the problem. So I I, I hope. 
I hope the the whole issue with uh, I, in, a, in a way, I hope I hope it was kind of a a, a, a work rather than than a shoot. Yeah, of course. Was trying to kill him. Um, has has uh, I, again, uh, and, and we we already have spoken about this previously in in, in our KTR episode, uh, which you can you can always check on uh, on our our main webpage at ktr.com, um, which is. What what what's the number again? Um, uh, the episode is one twelve, and uh, that's kfabetalkradio dot com. Um, you know, for anyone that's gonna take that ttr dot com into the literal. So uh, yeah, yeah, kfabetalkradio dot com. Uh, episode one twelve. So yeah, okay. yeah. So a- anyone who's who's watched our previous uh, episode of K- uh, kfabe talk radio uh, will know that we talked about that, but um. Has has anyone spoken about that? Is is that been has that been? Uh, no, nah, there's still nothing really as of right now. Um, obviously, when you know when there is news about it, we're gonna have our ch- our ch- our two cents in involved. Um, right now, I don't know. It's like, but right now we're on pure speculation on what we saw and Pat alluded to. Maybe it could have been a work because, you know, he wasn't going after Juice, and Juice was the one that agreed to do the spot. But, you know, he, he remained in this, the, the confines of, um, hey, yeah, this is, uh, let me go after the heel that did the move. Um, I don't know. I, I still think maybe it could have been a shoot. I, you know, I, and I say that because Josh Burnett is one in MMA fighter, two has a short fuse, and three has had a lot of moments from what I've gathered and from what a lot of people, including even our good old uh, beach ball there, Earls, have said that um, Josh Burnett has a lot of moments on going, just going off the cuff on a lot of these shows. Like, he shoots quite a bit and goes, you know, goes out of character quite a bit. I, again, I remember you, you mentioning this where, you know, he's, he's, uh, it, completely pissed off, and he's 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 talking about how uh, the referee uh, needs to maintain order because yeah I I, I, I thought that was kind of a, a sh- kind of you know work. Well, that's Jim Ross actually saying that. That wasn't even Josh Burnett. Mm-hmm. George, Josh Burnett was more so just sticking with Jr. and agreeing with him. It was more Jr. saying, "Oh yeah, they've been outside the ring for a minute. Somebody got to get some order around and get their shit together." I, I thought that I thought that was a good uh, yeah. Jr. I, Jr. was clearly keeping keeping from Kfabe. That that's the thing, and that's the thing I want to say is Jr. was cl- keeping yeah. Jr. was keeping Kfabe. Josh Burnett, yeah, he was shooting a little bit. Are, are, are I they... believe I believe the motherfucker stood up and was ready to fucking you know smack the helly fucking hell out of Jay White. I believe it. I mean, I know I may be me a mark for saying that, but no, dude, it looked. I could, I, yeah, I could definitely believe it. I, I just, the way, the way it was in, in some extent, I, I maybe, I'm, yeah, you know, you never know. It, it's always one. It's in this business, you, you never really know fully what, uh, what the case could be. Yeah. Um. I mean, going through the match, it was really, really. Uh, Really, really technical early on, and then it kind of devolved into kind of like a grudge match. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought, uh, I thought Juice had had the crowd eating out of his hands. He's he's gone so much, so over in the in the amount of time he's been in the company, and uh, you know, it, it, and I find it funny because I remember, you know, a couple of years back, uh, one of the you know, one of the minor, you know, the cards on the show was Juice Robinson and Cody, and I just find it how quickly in the past couple of years they've shot up the card in, in New Japan, and now you have, you know, the main event with Cody, and then you have the the semi main with Juice Robinson. So yeah, yeah, and you know, and you know, it's like it's great to, for me. It's great to see that because, like, I remember when this guy. I didn't give a shit about any news in NXT. I didn't really fucking, you know, I saw him as this gimmick, CJ Parker, who was the fucking hippie walking around. Um, you know, I didn't fucking, I, yeah, I didn't really care. 
Um, but, you know, seeing, like, he was that, got let go, and then he comes here, he's a young boy, and he, he, the story here is that him and Jay White were basically young lions together, and now they're in the semi-main event, it's like, man, what a fucking story, and that's one thing why I'd say this is one, probably my favorite match on the card, maybe one of my favorite matches of the year, because it was one of the matches, it told a tremendous story, despite the little blemish there with the whole announcer spot, but ultimately, it told a great story, Jay White's a piece of shit now, he evolved into this, another fucking character, that is unlike the guy that Juice Robinson met when he was a young lion, and now Juice is out to not only take him down, but take his belt away from him. And Juice also has his own story, where, you know, he got let go from a, the, the be-all, end-all. And, you know, now he's came here to another company, you know, outside of the country, made him, you know, made himself into a, or attempting to make himself into a outside superstar. And, you know, it's, and then when he got the big win, the crowd goes nuts, it was just like, Man, like you, you fucking feel it, and then he's hitting his finish, and Jay White's kicking out of it. It was a good fucking babyface heel match. Like you, you couldn't help but fucking root for Juice Robinson when he won. He won. I fucking marked out. I actually, I stood up and went fuck yeah. Yeah, I mean, in terms of your feel good uh, victories this year, I would say this is. It's really, up there with Kenny Omega winning the belt. It's it's too. it's it's up there with Kenny Omega winning the belt or or. Or when uh, when uh, you had uh, uh, Aleister Black win the win the NXT Championship, it's it's one of those feel good moments, you know, those those championship wins that you, yeah. you feel make you feel something. And uh, you know, after after a couple of years of you know just title champ, you know, titles and championships that just change hands on a whim, at least this is something that makes you go, hey, it's fun, it's fucking fun to watch professional wrestling. Absolutely. You know, it also kind of reminded me, too, um, a little bit of Bailey Sasha from NXT um, three years ago for the uh, the women's title, where, like, Sasha was really the bona fide heels, Bailey was a bona fide baby face, and you just fucking just had the crowd just totally into booing everything about Sasha. Totally just rooting for Bailey when she finally won. It was the big pop, and it's the same thing here. Where it's like, you know, he, you know, he hits him with the, with, hits him with the, uh, the fist he couldn't use, and then, you know, he hits the finish, kicks out. You know, eventually Jay White, I think he got him, and Jay, um, Juice turns it around into the fucking, uh, you know, the roll up, and that's it. I, 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 it's kind of weird too. It's just like it's such a big moment. I, it's such a it's such a um, huge moment too. Especially like uh, uh, to win on a championship on a roll up. You don't really see that too often. I'm actually gonna. He he did address that in his post show interview. If you haven't seen it, um, it's it, it's it's a five minute clip. So I'm just gonna sh- pretty much talk about take out some of the shit he said in that. Um, so. In, in this promo, and I'd say I'd urge people to watch it because you, you want the emotion of it, too. Um, in the promo, he addresses, actually, and he, he just totally shoots. Like, he you know, he tells his real name, Joe, Joe Robinson. Um, he talks about being in NXT, saying that was the be-all, end-all, and that the guy, uh, Cannon Seaman, who was the, uh, you know, one of the, the, one of the hiring, firing guys of NXT told Juice, Joe, go out there and make yourself a star when they let him go. And then, I, uh, you know, he's, he's holding up the belly. He's on Candid Seaman. Now, I'm, now, you know, now I feel like I'm a star. He goes, you know, people say that um, belts in this industry don't matter. He goes, people I say I could go to go straight to hell. He goes, titles do fucking matter. And then, um, you know, and then one of the last things he talks about that I thought was amazing, that this is the best part of the promo to me, was when it was addressed by one of the people interviewing him about the uh, roll-up. And he goes, um, yeah, I used a roll-up. A lot of my heroes did. He, and then he rats off examples. He goes, Shawn Michaels used a roll-up against Chris Jericho, WrestleMania 19. Bret Hart ro- does a roll-up on Bam Bam Bigelow, King of the Ring. Um, Owen Hart does a roll-up on his brother, WrestleMania 10. He goes, all my heroes did it. He's like, I'm a babyface, but you know what? It's, one o- it's wrestling 101. 
He goes, you know, some a guy's gonna hit me in the nuts. I'm gonna hit him with the finish. If it, they kick out of it, I'm gonna roll them up. Or if they, or if they, uh, if they don't want me rolling them up, I'm gonna turn it around, drop on their stack of dimes for a uh, Pope Friction. Yeah. And I, it, you know, he, I, 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 I just, I love that. That's completely feasible psychology. I think that that is, that is somebody who gets his position. Yeah. Yeah, and then he, you know, he says like, "Yeah, I cheated. Everybody cheats," which he's right. Everybody, everybody nowadays fucking cheats. There's no even when I, even when I, I showed you, um, with Hogan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they go off topic here, real, really quick before you know, even before we close this match up and we get into the main event. Um, uh, a little personal story, I guess you could say. Um, I showed him. A, uh, a video I have on my hard drive of all right. So basically, when my my parents and you know Professor Ellie and John Pantosi met Hogan in 1994 um, during the Conan O'Brien show in New York, and um, long story short, uh, we have autographed 12 inch dolls of them. You know of you know of Hogan autographed, and um, they were featured on the show. But the thing that uh, you know. Hogan was talking about in wrestling when Conan O'Brien was talk, you know, asking him was that uh, about the whole thing about him being a bad guy and Hogan saying, yeah, like, I would, you know, I, I would bite the guys and I would, you know, I would, I'd rake their eyes and I'd cheat and the people go nuts even though I'm a baby face. And so, you know, it, it's just, it's just a thing where it's like, yeah, you know, the heel does it, people notice it more. They're like, oh yeah, what a dirty human being, da 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 but then baby faces do it, obviously no one bats an eye, because that's their guy. That's you know, it's baby face. So, you know, I, I don't know. You, you wrestling psychology, you get away with it sometimes. I, I think if you don't do, you don't overdo it. Yeah, I think no, if it's yeah. well, that's what it is. They, these guys aren't overdoing it. They're doing it, but like you know, like Juice is Juice did some on their tactic here, you know. He's probably not going to do it in his next match. Who knows? He probably won't. You know? Hogan didn't cheat in every single match he was in. Um, you know? Shawn Michaels didn't cheat in every single match. Bret Hart didn't cheat in every single match he was in. When those guys were baby faces, mind you. So. You know? I don't know. It's one of those things. Next up and last up, we had the main event... Kenny Omega defending the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship against uh, Cody. Um, I'm going to say this is my favorite match of the night. I thought this was just overall. I thought this was the best story because you, you've been you, you've had these two guys that have been at odds with each other for months now. Just just the overall story of um, two two men who think that they're the leader of this all-encompassing uh, just stable in, in wrestling. One of the more, you know, one of the most well-known and, well, and well-respected heel uh, stables in, in, in wrestling right now. Uh, now, now we can all say that they're baby phase now but uh, you know originally this was this was one of the you know the premier heel uh, stables in, in all of wrestling so much so that now WWE is you know stealing their you know hand you know hand signals and and uh, you know their their whole shtick on you know and all their you know major uh, OG you know, members, you know, so, you know, the fact that you ha already have this situation where you have, you know, two guys that are trying to compete over who's going to be the leader, and uh, now, you know, you, you ha already have, you know, these, these, these two guys that are so uh, completely, you know, opposite of each other, where you have, you know, Kenny Omega, who's this, you know, wants his, you know, wants every match to be this fantastic, you know, five-star match or, or beyond. And, uh, you know, you have Cody, who's this, you know, heel who, 
you know, uses, you basically tries to psych people out, gets out of the ring, uses uses his wife as a as a a shield, and uh, you know, going into this match, I loved so much about like everything that they were doing, even even, and I I love the fact, blonde Cody, can can be considered. Heal Cody, because you know Steve through the entire time that he was blonde, he was a, he was a piece of shit. <laughs> He's a complete piece piece of shit. And as soon as he turned back to who he really was, and he went back to being humble, and, and and realizing that his his bullet club brothers are more important than his his ego and his and his hubris. I thought that was a fantastic. Um, story development. I thought as far as going and and, and I mean in the story in the storyline progression I thought was fantastic where you have a character who has been a huge piece of shit but even going as far back as, you know, bits and pieces of BT he actually does give a shit about, you know, his friends and he does you know, all the shitty things he's done and said were just manipulation so that you know, that he they would love him and respect him and, and see him as the leader yeah and it, a lot a lot of it was jealousy and uh i thought i thought that was a fantastic thing to do i thought you know how how often do you see in in professional wrestling that they have this full psychological detail of of a human being and you see from point a to point b and you see every bit and piece of their Backstory and why they do the things that they do, and I thought from the the few that they've been doing up until now, they've done a fantastic kind of counter, you know, kind of counter piece between you know Kenny and, and Cody, and 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 I, I, th- I think this is one of the underrated feuds that's been going on in professional wrestling right now. Um, Which is basically at this point, it's basically over for now. It's over for now. I think I think this was the perfect time to blow it off. Uh, I, I'm I, and I wouldn't say I'm, I'm disappointed that we're not going to be able to see a, um, a champion versus champion match in in, in uh, Wrestle Kingdom, uh, but I thought this was a perfect time to blow blow that off. And uh, getting into the into the match proper uh, and and just you know talking about the, some of the spots they were doing. Uh, it was brutal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, even obviously the the main brutal spot being um the uh, the release power bomb into the table that didn't break. Yeah, that was that was a scary spot. Yeah, and it, um, you know, a lot of people were sharing online, and even uh, the ring announcer from WCW, Gary Michael Capetta, was saying, "Oh yeah, um, you know." These things need to stop. This is not, you know, this is not good to have in pro wrestling. You know, guys, you know, shouldn't shouldn't have to do things like this. Um, table spots happen all the fucking time, so uh, that's I wouldn't really say what they did was too dangerous. It's just what was dangerous was the table they were using um, didn't fucking break easily, and they're in America. Yeah, no, I, it. it it seems like, um, and and this is this is the thing that kind of gets me. Uh, New Japan needs to get gimmicked tables. There's too many times you see yeah. these these stiff ass fucking tables that they use, and they're not gimmicked. And uh, you know, like the one thing I will give WWE, they have gimmicked tables. You tap those fucking tables, they're gonna break. And I'm surprised they didn't, you know, at least go to the same wholesaler that. It supplies Ring of Honor because they usually use gimmick tables and uh, they fall apart as you know if if you fucking sneeze on them. So yeah. uh, you know I I I, I, I kind of disagree with it. I, I think you can do a spot like that safely. I just think this was the situation where the the table is not gimmicked and they're too fucking stiff and they're very small too. So I mean this one was you know a lot bigger, but for the most part they do use tables that. Um, are basically just Japanese buffet tables. Yeah, uh, or, or or at the very least, like something that you would put something on to massage them. 
doesn't <laughs> it, you it doesn't look like it's something that uh, you know if you if you fall on your it's gonna catch the entirety of your weight and and break it up in a proper way and it, it you see it, it looks it looks more brutal but at the same time it, it looks more brutal and more real but it, at the same time you're you, when it looks more real it means that you're doing actual damage yeah and yeah. Uh, they they need to invest in getting some gimmick tables because by god that that spot looked it looked fucking atro- oh, that's that spot looked atrocious just just looking at how his head bounced off the table and the rest of his body just crumpled to the ground. Yeah, the fact he made that out, made that out of there okay is remarkable. Yeah. Um, and then there was there was a couple there was one spot that I noticed that uh, it fucked up half halfway to the match. Uh, it, it, it it's kind of difficult to say that they completely fucked up. Because I know they were at that point they were smart enough to try and sell um, Kenny Omega's leg. So when he went for a, you know, trying to, uh, they they went for the suplex and it was supposed to be a, a spot where he he lands and uh, you know it, it looked like he lost his balance and he just fell. And I, I remember uh, Jr. going, oh oh he. He, uh, you know, he he lost. Uh, he, he lost the ability to uh, keep his keep his weight on that leg, and that was the reason he fell. I, they do this. They do the spot, same spot later on, uh, which I, the good, thank God they didn't just try and do a take two like in WWE. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it is a lot of times, or you know, like especially in WWE, I, I hate to you know call them out on it, but I see that see it happens a lot, especially in the women's matches, where they go take two and they go for the same spot, even though the first time it was a clear botch, and rather than just like do go on to the next spot and do do something else and then maybe work back to it, uh, you know, like they they end up doing the same spot later on, but it isn't right after it. I, I think it's like at least a good. 15 minutes after that that botch happened so uh you know kudos on them for for kind of covering it up like if you're if you're untrained you know untrained eye with it you probably wouldn't even notice um not 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 many botches or mistakes in the match i thought it was very clean i thought it was a very um you know a very very physical match uh, a lot of a lot of suplexes a lot of um Brutal spots. Uh, another spot I, I, I was fucking brutal as hell was the um, the superplex from the top of the ladder. Oh yeah, where they teased that they were gonna go through the floor, which yeah, you knew they weren't because if they did, oh somebody would have been dead. <laughs> yeah, somebody would have been dead. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, that little dinky table barely, barely sur- He he got power bombed from. From the apron, and that nearly end, ended him. So I don't think they would have been stupid enough to try and do that to the to the floor. So um, I, I I I love the inclusion of the Bullet Club, where they're like, no, we just want you guys to live. We don't want you to kill each other. We're like, oh yeah, the box, yeah, the box were great in this match. Yeah, I like it wasn't annoying. Like a lot of times, they, like if they do this in a, in a do this scenario in a, in a match, usually can kind of come off as like, oh, stop getting involved in the match. It's annoying. Well, it, it kind of even took me back a little bit to even Taker Foley, where um, uh, Terry Funk kept getting involved um, to check on to check on Foley and you know try to take him back. Uh, I don't know. It just some little things like that helped the match. This match, this the, the Bucks were the Bucks. If anything, this was a tremendous part for them to be in because it added more to the match. It told the story of these are two these are two friends fighting, and it, the, these guys don't like that. Yeah, like as much as like Cody's been a piece of shit, he's still their friend. And they, yeah, they don't want either one of these guys to like kill themselves. I uh, I I thought the the finish was kind of flat. Was it, was it just me, or, or was the finish just a little bit flat? Oh, I, I don't know. I, at no point, like, at no point did I 
did I really? It's okay. Believe? No, I, I mean, I thought the like, okay, the the, you know, the V the V triggers were great. I thought the V triggers and then his body just going limp was great. I just thought uh, it would have been it would have been a little cooler for him to like fight, try and fight out of it, and you know, hit him trying to like struggle out of the the, the one wing angel and then him still getting him. Would have been a, would have been a little bit cooler. I I'm I just I just thought it was a little bit flat. Uh, yeah. That's my only my only real complaint with the match. I thought I thought it, the pacing was good. Uh, I thought the crowd was very much into it. Um. I, I, I did did like the handshake and then. What was your reaction? What was your reaction after the promo? You see the Tongans come out, King Haku, Tamatanga. I'm Tamatanga. gonna say, I'm gonna say this. I had no idea that happened watching that live, because I, I I watched the show live from eight o'clock to like almost twelve thirty. Um, the match ended. Um, the match ended, and um, my 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 pops came home at af, you know after work around around that time, wanted to watch it, so I was gonna put play it back. So I didn't want, I didn't see that clip till maybe three thirty four o'clock that night, and I and like I was almost gonna just skip over it, you know, right after Kenny won, and then like you know I'm skipping because I'm thinking like oh okay they're probably gonna do a promo. And also too, I also didn't really pay attention to Facebook, so at like four o'clock in the morning I'm watching, you know. Then all on the ramp and shit. I was like, okay, okay. And then they turn on him, like the Tongans. I was, I was just like, what the fuck? Like it legitimately was just, to me. It was I. I don't care what anyone says to me. This was a huge fucking surprise. What What was your dad? Your and your yeah. Dad's oh, we dad. both fucking we we both were shocked. We both were shocked, and my dad. Like was chuckling and he he was chuckling but he was serious. He's like, I love how Haku is in is in, is in a major role in 2018, but it's not like anyone's gonna tell him no. Well, you know what the thing is, I, and I, I I love the fact that he is because he's been such a major badass through through all of wrestling history. Again, yeah. as far as far as like if you go and you you hear the shoot interviews and and you hear about. How much of a fucking badass and how how destructive this guy was, and he was doing these hokey fucking Samoan gimmicks, and now finally, after how many years, he's finally getting pushed the way he should have been all those years ago. As a killer. Yeah. And uh, you know it, it's great. It, and it, when when was the last time you saw this this like father and son? Well, father and son's badass group. Mm. Have you ever seen something like this before? Other than the fucking uh, Shane McMahon and Vince McMahon, uh, no. Yeah, like this. This is like one of the first, like, pure. I'm going to. This is. This is me. I'm going. I'm a murder. I'm a fucking murderous human being, and I'm. I scared the piss out of human beings in the wrestling industry. And these are my equally fucking terrifying sons. And we're going to basically kick the shit out of a, the entirety of the Bullet Club. A, 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 a stable of ass kickers. And, yeah. <clears throat> and, I, and I thought that was fucking phenomenal. I thought, I thought they did a fantastic job. I, yeah. think, I think Haku looks as good as he's ever looked. And, uh, you know, Tama Tonga is... is they're they're idiots if they don't push him to the moon right now, because his his promos have been fantastic. His his you know his in ring style, and uh, you know I I think I think they're really good, really explosive right now. I, I love I even love the new the new merch that they showed off. Oh yeah, the new yeah I love the, the new, new yeah the new fire squad shirts. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean um. You know, and like he he's he's been in this company for at least a decade, to my knowledge, um, or you know, or close to it. So he's came a long fucking way. 
he, you know, I, I, I've, I've seen footage of this guy. I wasn't really watching Japan when he came around, obviously, but, you know, I was seeing footage of him, and he really is, like, one of the workhorses of that, of the fucking company, you know. Um, even, like, last year, where he cuts that, basically, a pipe bomb, you know, talking shit about, you know, basically, they, like, we're stuck on the island here, and, you know, I'm, you know, is you know, stuck against guys who are in their fucking forties and fifties. You know, he has a lot of he has drive to him. You know, and he has more drive to him than you know a good percentage of the main roster locker room in WWE. Um, I I don't know. I do I see Tommy Tonga ever ever getting the heavyweight title? Not in the not in the you know not in the near future at all. No, they're gonna I, keep I, that I could on see Kenny him main. A, I could see him main event. I, I mean, main event, yeah. But I, getting I, the belt, would, no. They would be they would be dumb not to at least. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a main event. It, it, him and Kenny will main event. I can I can almost guarantee that. Uh, uh, they would be really. But they're not really gonna put dumb. The, to they're not putting that. the belt on him. Oh, no, I mean, I, I even then I, I don't mind too much if that's the case. But at least have him main event. Yeah. Um, the the uh, the face turn of Cody. Yeah. Oh, that was. I mean, uh, kudos to them for for not uh, picking the low hanging fruit because it would have been too easy for them to continue the feud and have him, uh, you know, attack the rest of his of his Bullet Club brethren. Well, I don't, I don't know. It works. It works because you know, in my opinion, it makes sense because think about it. Yeah, he had kind of had a turn face because think of this. You know, he's doing a movie role. He wants people to. He wants. He's got to convince people to buy the buy into the movie that he's doing, whatever he's doing. So he's got to brush brush away the uh, the whole. I'm a heel, but I'm gonna promote myself anyway. Um. So yeah, he. he that that's one thing. The next thing is he's got to promote all in. So it's easier to promote your show if you're a babyface. So, he's got a lot of outside shit going on where, you know, it was going to tie into, hey, let's just turn the guy. We have a huge antagonist now to take his place, and that's Tamadanga. And it's perfect because, you know, and think about this too, like, it basically, it's now officially divided into predominantly the American Bullet Club, which is what it's been now for the past fucking year, and the Japanese version, where now it's just basically the Tongans. I, I, I thought it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a um, missed opportunity not also putting um, uh, uh, Yujiro in, in the group too. Yeah, that was a little weird. I, I thought they I thought Yujiro and, and Chase should have should have uh, also Yeah, especially protected. since there were well you know what too, you know what that means? That means that it's an easy plot for them to have if Kenny in the box and Cody and Marty and Hangman are not all on that show for whatever New Japan card. That means it's an easy ploy to do, hey, let's do Fale and Tonga Loa against Chase Owens and um, Yujiro. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then they can they can have somebody that they can just kick the shit out of. Yeah. Also, also uh, later on down the road, if there's a situation where yeah. uh, they need they need a they need a dramatic turn, they can always have them. Rip off the bullet club shirt and re- reveal the uh, the uh, firing squad stuff. So, yeah. Overall, what would you grade this pay per view? Uh, I'd say it's probably a B, a solid B. I, I nothing, nothing here is nothing here is amazing. The stuff that is 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 fantastic. Uh, I, I just an average av- average pay per view. Like it, it's yeah. a little bit above average. I wouldn't. I I would have. I, I probably would have given it a C. If if we hadn't had the fantastic main event, the the great uh, you know heel turn from from uh, Tamatanga and Haku and 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 then the the face turn from Cody, which was again fantastic storytelling. Um, I also probably I probably would have you know again another thing was the the fantastic uh, junior heavyweight match and. US um, match. And the US basically, title match, the, which was a great story. Yeah, the best way to put it, and I'm going to give it probably a, a solid B too, is because the best way to put it, 
this pay this show was basically saved by three matches. Other than that, it was a media. It was a pretty much a mediocre card. Yeah, it's a, it was. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a mediocre. If you card, took those right? three out, it would be. Eh. I I mean, for the most part, there's really no bad bad matches. I wouldn't give it. I would say I'd say it's a, a slightly above average. All right, all right, all right. yeah. It's a, yeah, it's above average show. So. Yeah. All right, folks. You know, with that, uh, we're gonna call this a show. Uh, you know, thank you all for listening right here on YouTube. Um, be sure to check out check us out uh, next week. We will be doing another AM Thunder of Extreme Rules, where we complaining about that show, and then uh, we're gonna you know obviously have another KTR next week. Um, you know, all the, you know the usual kfavetalkradio.com, facebook.com backslash kfavetalkradio, and search us on YouTube. I'm on Twitter at EricTheRed211. And you got Mr. Underscore Bonesell for all your gripes and complaints on the show. I don't give a shit. And with that. Don't make me get Haku to spike pile drive you into a chair. And with that, in the words of Kenny Omega, I bid you adieu. Goodbye and good night. Till next time, folks. Keep a cave, Fabe. Bitches. Hey guys, if you're a fan of what you just heard, please go to kfabetalkradio.com, your official source for everything kfabe talk radio. You can find our links for iTunes, Stitcher, Facebook, which is facebook.com backslash kfabe talk radio, and our YouTube page. Our YouTube page features all live streams of Kayfabe Talk Radio weekly episodes, AM Thunder, which is our pay-per-view review show, as well as custom-made montages of pro wrestlers, mostly from New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor. Till next time, keep it Kayfabe. Bitches.